The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to the land of Genesaret and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, people immediately recognized him. <clears throat> They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they may touch only the tassel on his cloak. And as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> it's hard to us to imagine in the gospel at times a time without technology a time we didn't have much communication. But that is the time that Jesus was born into. And after doing some ministry, they crossed to the other side of uh, the Sea of Galilee, and they come to Genesaret. And people don't know he's coming. Uh, there's no advertisement. There's no news. There's no Twitter. There's no Facebook, there's nothing to prepare them to know that he's coming. And he arrives, and St. Mark, we find he's always to the point. He doesn't give a lot of details. He's right to the point. They arrive, they tie up there, they leave the boat, and then people immediately recognized him. What did they recognize? Who did they recognize? They recognize a man who was very compassionate. They recognize a man who loved and was drawn to the sick and the dying. They recognized a man who was loving. And interestingly, instead of running to Jesus, which would be maybe the first instinct, oh, there's Jesus, let's Let's go run to him. Let's tell him about the sick who are in our land. They do something interesting. They run away from Jesus. It says they scurried about the surrounding country. And scurried is a very interesting word. Usually when we think of scurry, like you open cabinets and there are mice in there, and the mice scurry. They're, they're in a frenzy to get out of there. So if you imagine the scene, they recognize Jesus, and they're all running in different directions, but why and for what? They're looking for people who are sick. And the sick were often very obvious. They were on the side of the roads. And they didn't necessarily know all these people. Maybe they walked past them day after day. Maybe they just were in search but that very brief encounter with Jesus, being in his presence, caused a change in their hearts. And they didn't go just to run to Jesus, say, Jesus, we know you're, you're special, we know you're connected to, to God, because they didn't fully understand he was God yet. These are my needs, this is what I want. They ran, their hearts were moved in the presence of God, and they began to evangelize. They, they're bringing the good news of Jesus to the sick, the infirm, the lowly, the lepers, those who couldn't walk, those who couldn't see.
Then we're told they bring him, they bring the sick on mats wherever they heard he was. And it says, whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces. And so this teaches us something else about Jesus. Our church, we're here, it's very important to come into the church and pray, to receive, to hear the word of God, to receive Jesus in the blessed sacrament. Very, very important. But Jesus is teaching us that he's also to be found outside. He wants us to evangelize, to bring the good news out to others. It doesn't just remain in the church. It doesn't just remain in my own heart, my own prayer. There's a movement to go out to the other. And so Jesus is teaching us in compassion and love, not only are we not to gossip about others or hurt other people's reputations or ignore people that are hurting, not only are we to not do those things, we are to, in a positive way, reach out to bring the goodness of Jesus we have experienced to others and to bring it out into the world, not just to keep it local. And then it says, in, they begged him that they may touch only the tassel on his cloak. So interestingly, they're not even asking him to, to physically touch. They, they had such faith and trust, and many of them just wanted to touch the tassel hang from his, his cloak, his clothes, and if they could just touch it, they believed they would be healed. And it says many, St. Mark says, many who just touched his tassel were healed. My brothers and sisters, we are so blessed because we have more than just the tassel. Sometimes I wish I could be back in that time period and really see Jesus and say, wow, this is real. But our faith tells it, us that, that it is, and that we have something even greater. We have Jesus truly present in the Blessed Sacrament. And as we touch it, as we consume Jesus, if we believe, there is healing. It may not always be the healing we're looking for, but there is always healing. All of us here that are in here and those who are watching on the computer all of us are in need of some kind of healing. We never will not be healed when we receive Jesus in the Eucharist. Uh, perhaps unless we shouldn't be receiving, if maybe we're in mortal sin, there's a clash there. But when we're in a state of grace, we're always going to receive a healing. And if we're not able to receive either for whatever reason, or we're on the watching on the computer, we can trust his true presence will bring us healing. Just being in his presence, just like the disciples when, I mean, when the people of Genesaret, when they saw him after he came off the boat, they had an encounter. Even without having a conversation with him, their hearts and their minds were converted. They were touched by his heart. Let us pray that as we continue the Holy Mass, that we may grow in trust of the holy and true presence of our Lord Jesus who is with us. May he bring healing to us and may we, experiencing his love, his compassion and healing, bring it to the many around us who are hurting and who are in need of the message, the good news of Jesus. Regina Cieli, Letare, Alleluia, qui aque menu isti portare, Alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit.